Hello everybody, this is Lauren Harpster from Bead and Blossom. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating um, my workflow when I'm working with multiple colors of beads. This is a question that I get quite a lot, is how do you use multiple colors with French beading? Now, I am going to recommend that you use bead spinners for this, because typically um, beads go on and off this, the wire several times, and if you're working from a hank, you can't put them back on the hank and you end up having to string those beads by hand later. If you're using a bead spinner, you can just throw them back in your bowl and restring those same beads easier um, later. And you'll see that kind of as I'm working through the video. Now, just as a little note here, this is this video is an excerpt from my French beaded camellia class that I have published on my website. Um, you can purchase that class as a video plus PDF combo um, in the video classes tab on my website or as just a PDF from the shop tab. Now, before we get into this video, I got to mention these beautiful bead spinners that I'm working with today. These ones were handmade by a wood turner named Jerry Ritter, and they are some of my absolute favorites to work with. Now, if you know me, then you know that I collect bead spinners. It's a little bit of a hobby of mine. I am absolutely fascinated by them. For me to tell you that these are some of my favorite bead spinners is kind of a big, a big deal because I have a lot that I really like. Um, now, his bead spinners are a miniature size. So they work really well with small amounts of beads, but you can just refill them when you need more beads. Um, <clears throat> his newer designs do help you scoop up even those last little bits of beads. And um, I really like the bases on these especially. I like the square bases. Um, they're nice and thick. Let's see if I can kind of tip it sideways here. They're nice and thick and they're heavier than the bowl. Um, so they are a really great counterweight against the bowl. The shape makes it harder for me to knock them over if I bump into them. I can fit them side by side directly beside each other. And because the base is wider than the bowl, my bowls don't touch when they spin. All right, so these are really excellent bead spinners. Um, they're also just made with really beautiful wood. So when Jerry has them in stock, because they are handmade and not factory made, you know, he makes uh, a bunch of them at a time and then sells them, they're usually on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where you can usually find them, but you may need to come back. If they're not in stock now, you might need to come back later and check to see when he's made some more bead spinners. All right, now I like working with multiple bead spinners just because it's a little bit easier for me, but not everybody has multiple bead spinners or can buy multiple bead spinners. So what can you do when you need to work with multiple colors and don't have a lot of bead spinners? Well, one option that you can use pretty quickly without having to invest a whole great deal. Uh, this little container, I don't know where I got it from, but I didn't originally purchase it for beads. All right, you can fill the little bowls like this and just use a scooping method. If you kind of turn your beads sideways and then scoop with your wire. You can string beads that way. That will help you to use multiple colors. Now, if you're only gonna get one bead spinner, I'm gonna recommend uh, the Beadalon Junior sized bead spinner. Um, it is a smaller sized bead spinner, a little compact, smaller than the um, standard size bead spinner, which is about this size. All right, so it's smaller, it works with smaller amounts of beads. Um, but one of the reasons why I recommend this is because Beadalon makes what is called a quick change tray. There are little plastic inserts that fit over the top of this particular bead spinner so that you can work with multiple colors of beads without having to dump out your bead spinner. Because this is a question that I get quite a lot, um, I decided to go ahead and publish this portion of the class on YouTube so that I can teach everybody um, my workflow when working with multiple colors. Now, before we get started, I want to look at my pattern here. I'm going to show you guys we're going to be making this petal B for my camellia, and we're going to be working with a technique called continuous basic frame, which is abbreviated as CBF in my patterns. This is a technique that I developed during my time as a designer, and it allows you to make multiple basic frame style petals on one single length of wire. Now we are working with a shading pattern, and I kind of want to show you guys how I write out my shading patterns first. Uh, this is how I do it. I don't know if other designers do it this way or not, um, but this is how I like to write mine out. Um, now, we're going to see some weird words here that might not make a whole lot of sense until I get to the demo. Now, first off, I've got a color code written in the pattern. So each of these uh, letters that you see here refers to a specific color. A, in this case, is going to be the main petal color, and I am using a pink for this one. B is our edging color, which is going to go around the outside edges of our petals. This one right here. And for that one, I am using a two cut 
a pink satin bead just to put a little sparkle on the edge of my petals. And then color C is the color that we're using to make some markings at the base of our petals. And in my case, I'm using yellow. All right, now, when working with multiple colors in French beading, we do not pre-string our beads onto the spool and work from the spool because everybody is, their techniques are a little bit different. If you look at my petals, they're actually all slightly different sizes and that means they use different bead counts um, in each petal. Uh, so we don't always know the exact pet bead counts before we start, so we can't pre-string our beads. What we are gonna do is we're gonna cut wire off of the spool and then add beads as needed for each row of beads. All right, so the pattern says that we need about two and a half feet of wire. Um, that's the amount that I used for the first several that I made. I noticed with some of the last ones that I used a little bit more wire. So I always recommend if a pattern tells you a specific amount of wire to cut, always cut more because sometimes I use more than what I cut this first time too. That will give you enough wiggle room to um, make up for any differences in personal technique um, that are bound to happen. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut three feet of wire this time. And when working with wire that's cut off a spool, always run your finger along it to kind of straighten it out so it doesn't end up in a big long coil, but you've got a long straight length instead. So get rid of the coil. Okay, we're working with continuous basic frame, um, which is a modified version of basic frame. And basically, we just flip it upside down and that allows you to work continuously uh, making new petals. So our basic row count here, basic row is row number one. We have 2C, 3A. So the 2C is going to be at the bottom of the basic row and 3A is going to be at the top. So I'm, I'm actually going to string for this first one. I'm going to string the 3A first and then 2C. And then I'm going to make a little loop in the end of my wire just so that my beads don't fall off. Now with a regular basic frame, this would be our top wire. But in a uh, continuous basic frame, that's actually our bottom wire. So we're going to flip this upside down like this. This is our bottom wire. We need it to be about three to four inches long, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can measure it if you like. All right, we're gonna pinch and hold that basic row in place so it doesn't slide and move around. And then we're gonna measure out a little bit of wire for our top loop. We don't need it very long because we're only making six rows of petals. So somewhere about a three fourths of an inch to an inch should be fine. That should be the finished length of the twisted wire. All right, now you'll notice that our working wire is coming out of the top of our basic row instead of the bottom. A regular basic frame would look like this with our working wire coming off of the bottom and wrapping this way. And with continuous basic frame, because we're upside down, our working wire comes out of the top. All right, now before we go on, I need to explain a few things here. Um, row two, you'll see says fill A 3C. Now fill A basically means that we're gonna fill out the entire row with color A first, and then subtract 3A from the end and, and replace it with 3C. Now the way I, the reason I do it this way is because due to differences in personal technique, we may have a different number of total beads in the entire row. But when you're working with a marking that's at the beginning or end of a row, which all of these are, the counts for those markings should be approximately the same for everybody who works it. You might need to adjust a little bit, but generally they're gonna be pretty close to the same as what's written in the pattern. We see the most fluctuation in the fill row. Even in these petals that I made in this component here, um, I actually have a different number of these uh, color A beads in each of the rows. All right, so just due to different di uh, differences in personal technique, that fill uh, color, might be a different count and that's why I don't bother putting a count for that one. Uh, just use however many fill out the entire row. So I'm going to string enough of color A onto my spool to fill out color to fill out row two down to the bottom wire. All right so I'm going to wrap down the side to the bottom. Make sure that all of your basic row beads are all the way down. And I'm going to measure out that row entirely with color A, and that's going to tell me how long my row is going to be. All right, and then to get that 3C in there, I'm going to subtract those 3A from the end of my row, and I'm going to end up with some blank wire there. 
Remove all of the excess color A off of your off of your working wire and put it back in your bead spinner. This is why I like working with bead spinners when using multiple colors is because I tend to measure out, remove, and put it back in the bead spinner. So my beads go on and off my wire while I'm working. And if you're working from a hank from this, you can't put it back on the hank and eventually you're gonna have to string those beads by hand. But I can just take them off, put them back in my bead spinner and restring them later. All right, so I've removed those last three A and I'm gonna replace them with three C. Now, my next row starts row four. Oh, sorry, row three is what I'm on. Starts with 4C. So I'm gonna go ahead and string those 4, 4C on right now since I'm already at my spool, or already at my bead spinner. Okay, so then I can wrap row two. I need a pointed bottom for this petal, so I'm gonna wrap at a 45 degree angle. And then I've got those 4C there to start row three. Now row three says it ends with fill A, so we're just gonna use how many ever A fit to fill out that row. But you'll notice that row four starts with fill A, so I can go ahead and string enough of my A color to fill out both rows B and C. Or, <laughs> I keep getting switched up here. Too many letters and numbers. Fill out row uh, three and four. All right, we're gonna wrap up to that top wire and I need a round top, so I'm gonna cross over at a 90 degree angle and make a 90 degree angle wrap. And see, I've got right here, my beads are not covering my top wire completely, so I'm going to do a little lift and push those wires down to make sure that they cover that top wire and not have leave any wires exposed. All right, now row, we're on row four, it says fill A. So I'm gonna measure out the entire row with A, and then I need to end with 4C. So I'm gonna remove 4C off the end of my off the end of my row and put the back in my spinner. And then I can replace with 4C. Now I am working with the same brand of beads, so it's more likely that I will that four of these color beads will equal the same length as four of these color beads. If you're using a different brand of beads, that may not be the case. So if I had Toho's here and check here, it might not necessarily be the same number of beads that I'm removing off of the spool. So it might be three Toho's equals four check beads. I don't know for sure. I'm just giving an example there. But um, so you might need to keep track of that. But um, with these types of shading patterns, I'm not trying to make a very specific marking. I just need some yellow at the bottom of my petals. And it's gonna be okay if one row is a little bit longer or shorter than what is shown in the pattern. I just need enough beads to reach that bottom wire. Now, what I often what I also do, I when I'm working these patterns, I don't use these counts. These counts come afterwards, after when I'm writing up the pattern. I usually line them up by sight. So I would just, instead of counting my beads, I would line up my marking with the previous row and say, hey, I want this one to be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna go here, remove those beads and replace them. So I don't count while I'm working. All right, now row five is gonna start with 5C. So I'm gonna have 5C on my wire. Now markings at the beginning of the row, you just add them on. Markings at the end of the row is where you have to subtract. All right, so that's the difference there. I don't know if I made that very clear. Start with 5C, or yeah, 5C, and then we're gonna move to our edging color because these are the last two rows of beads. So we're gonna string enough of color B to fill out both rows five and six. All right, so I'm gonna fill out row five with however many color B I need to finish out that row, 90 degree angle at the top. And then for row six, I'm gonna fill out with that color B. And then I've got a situation here where my color B is not the same length as my color C. These are a very different length. I've got some two cut satin beads here, which are a little bit more cylindrical in shape. And they're not, if I count out Let's see, row six ends with C, 6C. If I count out six of these uh, two cut beads, it's gonna be a lot longer than what six beads in my regular size 11 beads is gonna fit. So for this row in particular, I'm not really even gonna do the count. I'm just gonna use my lining up 
visually method. So I can see that my yellow markings are kind of making, they're slanting downward at the side, kind of a U shape with my yellow markings. So I can just eyeball, hey, I think I want my yellow marking to come up about here on this row of beads. That's usually how I place my colors, is I line them up visually um, in comparison to the rows around it, rather than counting anything. And then I'll fill it out with however many yellow beads will fill that row. All right, I'm gonna wrap twice to finish off that petal. And then I've still got my working wire in place where I can start my next petal. So my basic row is gonna be 2C and 3A. I'm gonna string a little bit more of that because I can start row two with that color A. All right, so this is what I need for my basic row. Now with all continuous techniques, you need to leave a little space in your wire below the second and any further petals. You need to leave a little space below that basic row so you have enough room to make all of your wire wraps. Now, if you see a length written in a pattern, don't just automatically use that length. That's written there kind of as a guide. You'll get better results if you measure against your previous petal rather than working with any measurements that's written in a pattern because again, Differences in personal technique may mean that you and I have a different length between at the bottom of our petal. All right, so always measure your petal instead of working with my measurements. Now, what I usually do, I don't actually measure, I just eyeball it. I eyeball just about everything. So I can bring up my basic row right beside my first petal and I can kind of eyeball, hey, my basic row ends there. So I need about that much space of wire to make my second petal. I'm going to pinch and hold that space with my finger and my thumb and because I don't want that space to shrink at all because then I won't have enough space to make my, make my petal. And I don't want it to grow and get any longer, so I need to make sure that those beads stay um, right there so that length doesn't change. So I'm going to pinch and hold really tightly. I'm going to measure out some wire for my top loop, which this is, might be a little bit too long, so I might just make it a little bit shorter than the one over here. And then I'm going to twist those two wires up there to make my top wire. And I've already got some color A on my working wire so that I can start row two. I'm going to turn this at a 90 degree angle. One, that helps get this petal out of the way, but it also helps to keep my bottom wire nice and straight. So I'm going to measure out row two with color A first. I'm going to fill with color A measure out the length of my row, subtract the last three beads, and replace them with three of the C beads. And I'm gonna go ahead and string four beads to start row three. Okay, so now I can wrap row two with a pointed bottom, 45 degree angle wrap. And then I've got that four C right there to start row three. Now row three ends with fill A and row four starts with fill A. So I am going to string enough beads to fill out rows three and four. And then row six, I'm gonna measure out with color C. And then I'm just gonna visually estimate about where I want my yellow beads to end. Now, this yellow comes down a little bit further than the yellow did on my other petal. That's perfectly fine. I don't need these markings to be exactly the same on each of my petals because I just need a little bit of yellow at the base of each petal to get a little bit of a fade towards the center of my flower. That's all I need. These counts don't actually matter. You can visually place them. The counts does not matter. Okay, so don't stress out about them too much. If they end up being a little bit different on each petal, that's fine. And then I'm going to replace those beads with color C. And then wrap twice at the bottom to secure the end of my petal. All right, so in my patterns, you might see a count like this, especially my new ones. Some of my older ones don't use these counts um, because I'm gonna show you the actual method that I use while I'm beading. I'm um, here in just a second. I don't count things while I'm doing my beadwork. 
I line up everything visually because I think that that gets me a little bit more consistent results. Now, if you need these counts, go ahead and use them, but know that they are a guideline. If you look at some of these petals that I've made, I use the same counts for each of the rows, but you'll notice that some of them aren't quite exactly the same length as uh, the rows in other petals. Now this happens one due to maybe I wrapped at a slightly different angle. Like these ones over here look slightly less pointed than these ones over here. That's probably why they're a little bit shorter, but probably also why um, my rows don't all, don't all come up to the same height on each petal. Now for this particular shading pattern, I really just need a yellow to pink fade and that is perfectly fine. Your petal is going to turn out just fine even if your rows aren't all exactly the same length as what's shown in the picture. But there are times when these markings do matter. The exact placement of these markings do matter. And for those ones, I find it more accurate to line everything up visually rather than relying on a count. So let me show you how to do that. Now, I don't count things while I'm beading. Okay, I all of these shading counts that you see written out in my patterns, for those that have them, I count these after I've taken the picture. I count them off my picture. I don't work with counts while I'm counting, while I'm beading, because I'm lazy and I want to go fast. So I line everything up visually. I never use these, okay? So that's, they're just a guideline. Don't take them too seriously. All right, so I'm gonna start my third petal. I've already got two C down there, and I need three A to start out my basic row. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put a little bit more A on there just so I can get row two. All right, now the basic row should be the same for everybody. Don't worry about altering counts for that. It's pretty much the only thing that I ever count for is the basic row. All right, so i get my little frame set up here. All right, so I'm gonna measure out this row. Again, I, I do measure it out with the first color just so I know what length it is. But instead of actually counting anything, I take a look at exactly what shape I'm making with my marking. In this case, I'm making kind of like a, a V or U shape in the bottom of my petal to make a little wedge of U, of the, um, the yellow at the base of my petal. So I don't count anything. I just line it up with this first row. I've got the start of my yellow marking here and I know I need to angle downward. So what I'm going to do, I could either go here and right beside it the same height or I could go a little bit lower. All right, for this one, I'm gonna go about the same height because that two looks a little bit too short. All right, and then I'm gonna wrap my row. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I've got more of the C color than I need. I'm gonna line it up on the other side. And I'm gonna say I wanna go a little bit, just a smidge below that first row in my basic row. So I'm about even with, but just slightly below it. And then again, I'm gonna fill out my rows. All right, I'm gonna measure out that row. And then again, I'm gonna say, I need to go downward at a little bit of a U. Now this first row, I didn't go down a great deal. This about even with that basic row. Um, so I'm gonna go down a little bit further just so I can create that U shape. And then I can wrap my row. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna measure out just visually. I need to make a little U shape. I need to go down a little bit. I can go down one or I can go down two. I'm gonna go down a little bit further on this side. Both row five and row six. And then just visually again, I need to go down at a U shape. So I'm going to go down to about here so I can make this row shorter than the previous row. All right. So you see my finished markings look pretty much the same, but I didn't count anything. I just lined it up visually. All right. So you just repeat that process again to make all four petals of your unit. 
All right, so there I have um, my petals finished. And I'm gonna give these top wires an extra little twist just to make sure they're nice and tight. Now notice here that I didn't have a whole lot of wire left over. And that is exactly why you should cut extra wire than what a pattern says. Because even I used a little bit more wire this time than I did in previous um, components that I've made. Cut those top wires short and fold them to the back of the petal. And then we're going to close unit B by taking the tail wire and wrapping it around one, the first petal on the other side of the unit. And then twist those two tail wires together just a few times. And there we have a finished B petal unit.